Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the channel. We are going to be working on a closet today. The uh, church here that I'm working for needs a closet. They had these things uh, over there in the corner for some storage, and as you can see, we painted around them because we're going to be putting in a closet from that wall over there to that black line you see uh, right there. So today's video is gonna be mostly about the framing portion of it, how to frame it, how to do the doorway openings and such, and how to fasten it to the walls. And then we'll probably do a couple more videos uh, on how to do the drywall, hanging the doors, doing the finish work and such. So anyways, let's get started. I had to build a small wall first, and then we're going to make sure the size of what we want, because they said they wanted 13 feet, but we will put that half in wall this way up first. Uh, and that'll kind of tell us how big the closet's gonna be because we don't want it to crowd that door over there or the countertop. And then we'll have to rearrange some outlets later on with our electrician. But anyways, hope you guys uh, want to know how to frame a closet because that's what we're gonna do. Anyways, let's get into it. Okay, so what you saw me do just there was cut the boards for this end wall here. Now we know the closet is going to be exactly two feet wide or deep on the inside of the closet. So I know that this wall needs to be two feet because then I can set the wall on the front off of this wall. And then I marked it out uh, one on each end. Instead of 69 center, I put this one right in the middle, which is at a foot. That way when I mount shelves in there, I know that there is a support right in the middle of the wall to nail onto. So that'll make sense in future videos. And then also I stacked up those two plates there and then that way I can measure from there to the ceiling without having to do any math. It's pretty easy. So it was 107 inches from there to there. And so I cut these accordingly. So 107 inches. So this plus those two will equal the total distance between here and there. So let's go ahead and get these nailed together. We now have the end wall built and in place, and it looks like this. So I've got my final approval on the location of that wall, and it is going to be there. So we are now going to build this front wall, and this is where I'm gonna to try to lose you. I built, I did a little drawing over here on the board, and this is kind of gonna explain how I'm going to frame this wall. So this is your top plate, your bottom plate, and these are the doors that are going in this closet. So there's gonna be a double door here in the middle, single door here on the left, single door here on the right. And those are going to, that just makes it more symmetrical. And there's going to be three dedicated closets in this space, that way three different classrooms or Sunday school teachers can use different spaces. But anyways, so the overall length is 13 feet. That means that half of the distance is six and a half feet to the center line of where I wanna set this door. So I'll measure over on the top plate and bottom plate, six and a half feet from the end. And then I'll measure over the rough opening. And the rough opening means that the door is a certain size, but you want to be a little bit bigger. That way you can adjust it to make it level. So the door is actually like 80 inches tall and 40, I mean, um, 48 and something wide. But since we have more space, it's going to be rough opening of 82 inches and 50 inches wide. And then this door, both right and left, the same size, is a 32 by 80, but at 82 tall to match this one and 34 wide to give space again and it'll be a header and then two by fours going down all the way on those marks it'll be a little different the drawing because it's not the scale and then we'll center this door and that door off of the center line measuring over to the edge of this and then center it between here and there it all makes sense when we get into it so let's go ahead and start a time lapse of that being done Let's pause that time lapse for a second and catch up on what we're doing. We got the bottom plate and top plate cut to 13 feet, and then we've got them marked 16 on center as well as where the door openings are going to be. So now I have to cut, I'll stack those up, measure again, just like we did that little wall over there, and then we'll cut all these studs to fit into there, and I'll show you how we do the door openings there too. So let's 
get back to time lapse. So what you saw me do on the end of that time lapse there was cut the trimmer boards, which are the boards that, no, I'll explain it when we get to the end. Let me turn you around and I'll just show you. So there's the long board that goes from the bottom plate to the top plate. And then there's this trimmer board that goes from here to here, this short one, and it supports the header. So I took and cut those boards, which is 80 and a half because 82 inches to the bottom of here, minus the bottom plate to confuse you a little more. So I cut those and then nailed them onto the full length stud, like so. And then those are going to go on this mark here. The short one goes on this one and the long one goes on this one. So let's nail this ball together. Three things you saw me do there on camera was cutting the header boards. So I cut those out of scrap. That was a, that's a full board. Those out of scrap, and then I cut these little studs. Now, in the perfect world, I would have had would have bought one more piece of lumber, and I could have done those pieces on 16 on center. But since I did not, it is not a huge deal to do this. And so I put a one right in the center of the door opening. And then you'll see on the bottom side, I marked it with a nail. That way when I'm screwing my drywall in, I know right above that nail is a board to screw into. So I've got these walls put together, nailed together, and then the bottom is nailed together. So let's stand these up and then plumb them over here. And then I'll show you how to anchor them in the wall. The line right there, you'll see I cut, let me get my finger out of the way. I cut a opening that way you can see what was behind the wall. That way I can add uh, what I needed behind it to anchor this wall to but I already had some in it. So I just put it back together and when we do the drywall, we'll cover it up. And then over here, this line ends perfectly on a stud. So I didn't have to cut in there. So let's raise these walls. out it is finished the framing portion of it anyways is finished we got those three door openings got the the double in the middle and the singles on the side there'll be a divider in the middle but i'm gonna do that with shelving material so i'll show you how to do that later we got it anchored to the ceiling because there is a truss right above it conveniently so nailed right to the truss nailed to the stud and then tap con to the floor and between each place that way the wall plate doesn't go anywhere and it's super it's not going anywhere. So, and then this is nailed to the blocking in this wall. And then if you look down it, you'll see it's perfectly straight, which is great. And then the reason that we left the treated lumber all the way across before we cut it out is because we want the bottom of the wall to line up perfectly. So if we did little pieces like this, yeah, we would save a couple dollars in material, but it wouldn't be perfectly straight like it is. So anyways, I appreciate you all watching. This is going to be 
like a three-part series probably we're gonna do the drywall next and then maybe like the finished carpentry stuff and so stay tuned for the next couple episodes coming up if you have any questions comments please leave them down below i'd love for you to like subscribe but anyways have a good one thanks for watching we'll catch you later